Welcome to TMI, the Men's Initiative, where we interview leaders in the community and the body of Christ who have a proven track record and foundation of spiritual growth and success. These men will talk about spiritual well-being, men's mental health, relationship tips, health and body care, family, and more. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, my name is Pastor Willie Brown. I'm the pastor of Chosen Generations Worship Center Ministries in Lawrence, South Carolina. Um, as you can see, I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan. Uh, There's an America's team, my team. Uh, I've been pastoring for four years, um, ever since August 26th of 2020. Um, and my story is that in August 26th, my mother passed. And um, when she passed, that's when life threw the largest, toughest curveball of my life. Um, I had to learn how to deal with the loss of my rock, my foundation um, from a natural standpoint, but I also had to learn how to become a pastor. She, she, she left me in charge through the unction of the Holy Ghost of her greatest asset, her greatest sacrifice, her greatest work and at the time, I loved the Lord. I was in church, but I can't say that the church was completely in me. Um, I didn't have any type of form of training. I didn't know what it was to be a pastor, even though I felt that I had the most best, the greatest pastor, the greatest leader of all time to glean from. But like I said earlier, I wasn't paying attention to how she moved, how she passed her, how she ran the church. And I just thank God that four years later that God has kept me and that our church, our ministry is not only on the rebound, but it has regrown, it has, has began to regrow. And uh, the thing I can say is that when God puts you in the valley or, or when you are struggling with life concerning God's calling on your life, the best thing for you to do is to stop to stand still. When Moses was running from Pharaoh, the Bible says that the, that the Lord told him to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Is that some battles that we cannot fight on our own, some battles are not meant for us to, to, to do. It's for God's grace, his mercy, his love to keep us, prepare us and grow us and groom us into what he has called us to be. Amen. It, the, the, the most hurting part or the most difficult part out of all was not necessarily the fact that my mother had passed because I understood what she was going through. She, um, the Lord took her home by the means of cancer. So we, we had the, the unpleasant opportunity to watch her degenerate and we kind of knew what, what, which way she was going. The thing that hurt the most is that when people that you say that, that you think and they say that they love you, and they're here for you and they're supporting you and I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm going when they up and they turn around and they turn their backs on you and they say, well, you know, he ain't what maybe Pastor Kennard missed the mark on this one or maybe he just need time, but we're not going to be their support. And that, that hurts. That hurts because I, once again, I go back to the, the story of Moses. Moses made every excuse not to lead the children of Israel. But God said, don't worry about it. I got you covered. And even though Moses was the leader, the Bible says that when he got tired, he needed Aaron and her to hold up his hand. So it was never about me. It was never me thinking that, oh, I'm the pastor now. Beat on my chest is that I was in the point where I'm a heartbroken son. <laughs> I'm a greenhorn pastor. Amen. Only thing I got is my love for God. I don't know how to run the church. I had never pastored the church. I didn't know how to even manage life at the time because, like I said earlier, my greatest asset, amen, the Lord had took away from me. But the Bible says, stand still. And in me standing still, it taught me how to trust the Lord, how to depend on the Lord. And I tell people, I tell my church, is that they might not want to hear this, but my, the Bible says that I'm an epistle 
to be read by all men. And, I, 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 and I'm, I, I'm honest, for three months, I lived in my church. Because when my mama died, my then, me and my then wife, we separated. And for three months, I stayed in my church. Every night, on my altar, I cried. And not only did I cry, I cursed God out every night. Yeah, it's the ugly truth. Because the Bible says to cast all your cares. I wasn't in a point where I wanted to be cute. I didn't want to be churchy. I wanted to be exposed completely to my father, my God. And I cursed and, 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 and I cried and I cursed and I cried and I prayed. And one night it was to the point where I didn't have nothing left in me. I didn't have no crying. I didn't have no words. The only thing I could do was just get on the altar. And the Bible says that the moaning and the groaners, the unknown utterances, is what God heard. And as I just sit and I moan and I'm heartbroken and I'm asking the Lord, why me? Father God, why would you put me in this situation? Why would you allow my greatest triumph spiritually, where you're taking me, you take away my big support system? And on the altar, the Lord spoke to me. And he told me, he said, I had to remove everything around you that you depended on. Everything. The ones that you loved it the most, your mother, your family, your friends. He said, because you wouldn't focus on me. And so in that moment, I felt a weight lift up uh, off my shoulders. Depression left, confusion left. Self-esteem issues left. And I just thank God. And I tell people now when they say, Pastor Brown, how are you? I said, I couldn't be any better. How are you dealing with the loss of your mother? I said, this might, this might sound odd to you, but I thank God she's no longer here. Why would you say that, Pastor Brown? Because first of all, she had cancer. And if anybody has ever experienced the loss of a loved one through cancer, we know that it is a very, very vicious a very nasty, a very consuming disease. And if God wasn't going to heal her on this side, then to heal her and bring her to him. But in her leaving, not only was she brought to peace, but I was brought to peace because now I know who God is for me in my life. And the only way for me to survive, I'm a church kid. I'm 41 years old. I was born and raised in church. I've always loved church. I've always loved the Lord. And like I said earlier, it was times where I was in church, but church wasn't in me. And God had to orchestrate his plan divinely in order to get me where he wanted me to be. And like I say, this, this August 26th will be four years. And we're going to celebrate our former leader, District Elder Gwen Kennard. On August the 11th, 2024, a day after her birthday, we're going to honor the legacy, the, the foundation, and we're going to continue to build because that's what God wants, because it's not about me. And to any male, any man, any woman that may be dealing with the loss of a significant loved one that may lead you into a place of depression, a dark place, the first thing is, is that you have to find a safe space in order to release that. Because what I found out over time is that the, the more you internalize, the more you keep it, the more you try to be a man, the more you try to say, I don't need help. What happens is you, it's, you become a volcano. And what happens over time that that pressure builds up and sooner or later, you're going to explode. And so you got to find whether it's, a, whether it's a pastor, a friend, somebody that has some type of godly influence and godly relationship to be able to cast your cares because the Bible says that open confession is good for the soul. And guess what? It's men, we don't want to say that we hurt. We don't want to say that we cry, but we have to get it out of our systems because if not, we will explode. So if you want any additional information, you can look us up on Facebook. Uh, our church page is Chosen Generations Ministries Worship Center. All our information is on there. And if you want, like I said, again, my name is Pastor Willie Brown, but I go by Willie Brown and say, you got to try the spirit by the spirit. So we ask that you just continue to keep us in prayer as we pray for you. And I'm grateful for this opportunity.
And I ask that you just continue to keep us in your prayers.